Hi friends, I'm David from Above AVL, and this is David's Wonderful World of Color. I know it sounds like something Disney would do, but <laughs> regardless, we want to talk about color in stage lighting, and there's going to be a few facets to this video. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to talk about first how to choose colors, how to put colors together, and how to make them make sense in lighting, and then how to pair them to different songs a little bit, okay, or different parts of a, of a given event. Then we're gonna talk about how to make colors, how to use lights that you have with whatever features they've got and create colors that look really good, not only in person, but also on the camera because both do matter. Let's dive in. <laughs> All right, so we're here at our console and we've got our nice little studio rig here that we've been playing with. And when it comes to choosing colors, you can see here, I'm just gonna take everything to blue right now, right? Um, you know, when it comes to choosing colors, there are some things that work well together and some things that don't. And just some easy ways to pick colors that really go well together. It's called color theory. And it comes from art. It's not something we invented in lighting by any means. And it's really good to go by when you're trying to make things look great. So what does color theory tell us? Well, color theory tells us there's the color wheel, right? And the color wheel, if you've ever seen it, if not, just Google it, is a wheel of color where, you know, there's all different colors. I mean, you see it on color pickers and, you know, in different apps and whatnot. And we could just flash one up here from Onyx, that'll be easy. And the color wheel is helpful because it shows us colors and how they relate to each other. And so some really typical, kind of the simplest, easiest color schemes out there. Some of the colors that go together well are gonna be what are called the opposite colors from each other, okay? Um, the complementary color schemes, there's the word. Okay, and so those, for example, are like like we had here. We had some of the rig in blue and some of the rig in amber. Okay, so we got like a blue amber thing going on here. Technically, in this, it's they're calling it UV, but there, blue amber, right? And you know, mixing these two together gives us, as you can see on our stage, um, a really nice look between blue and amber. Okay, you know, other ones are going to be you know like red and green, right? Red and green. You know, red and green go really well together. Feels a little Christmassy sometimes. Um, and the cool thing about color schemes that are complementary is that um, they feel balanced, okay? And so when music or an event that you're doing, when things feel really balanced, that's when they work together. Another great one that I love to use personally a lot is yellow and purple. Always love how that works. And so just like we've talked about in some of these other videos, um, any color scheme you can put on your rig any number of ways, but let's let's not get away from this. So um, complementary colors are kind of the most basic. Then, you know, kind of, you know, the default ones everybody thinks of. Then if you want to go um, a little more dramatic, going kind of monochromatic can go well, right? So I'm just going to take everything right here to, you know, a nice, maybe we'll go to this dark blue. And so put everybody in the same blue, it feels really dramatic. Now with a monochrome color scheme, one thing you can do to get a little bit more out of it is you can kind of shift some of them a little bit, right? So like, for example, everybody's in blue, but I took one set of lights, there's my front lights and there's my back spots, you know, and I just shifted them and maybe I'll take the beams and do that too or the washes, and I just shifted them a little. So the colors are still close to each other on the color wheel, it's kind of blue to cyan. It feels it, it feels unbalanced. So any song that feels an unbalance isn't a bad thing, but that feels really emotional in one way or another, you know, going with like the blues, the cool colors, or going with the reds, right? You know, if we go pull in some, some reds and maybe on this last one we go and we pull in the amber and we're gonna get this pink to red to amber you know it creates a mood it, it definitely has a different and unique feeling to it and we can see that on on the rig um, as well and so 
uh, you know, when it comes to it, when you're thinking about basics of colors, you know, your complementary stuff, your colors that are across from each other on the color wheel, those feel balanced. Things like monochromatic feel pretty unbalanced. They feel, you know, pretty, they, they definitely feel moody. And so you can match those types of color schemes with the different, the different types of moods being given off at an event, whether it's by a band, a presenter, you know, whatever it may be, you can match that with what's coming from stage and it's gonna gel really well. It's gonna make a lot of sense. Okay, uh, what else are we thinking about? Other types of color schemes. There are triadic. So those are, and I would honestly have to look up a book for that. Um, they're, they're colors that make a triangle basically on the color wheel. Um, you can take any color, right? Any color, say we're here with red, right? And spice it up if you mix, you know, it with white, right? So if I just go ahead, you know, take a set of fixtures in white or do it here, all of a sudden, you know, adding half white to it, as you can see, and as you saw a minute ago, really gives you a, a pop of brightness and, and almost positivity um, to the feeling of the lighting. And so when it comes to determining colors and color schemes, you know, those are just some really great tips of the different types and, and how to get into them. Let's talk about how to make colors and how to make colors look really good no matter what. So with most lighting consoles, though, they're starting to come out of this. If you just launch up a color picker and you pick a color on the color picker, it's going to use the red, green, and blue LEDs and RGB sources and the CMY flags and CMY sources to make the color that you're going for, or at least get close to it. Of course, most of these systems are not calibrated. So if you take a bunch of different fixtures and you point somewhere on the color wheel, they're not all going to match. There's kind of two problems there. The first is that you're only using three of the LED emitters, whereas most fixtures may be, you know, it may be an RGBW fixture, could be an RGBA fixture, could be a RGB uh, amber, white, and UV fixture, and so could be an RGB lime fixture. And they're all going to mix differently in how they make the colors. And if you don't, if you only use the RGB, you're really missing out not only on the brightness of the color that you're getting, but the vibrancy as well. What I always recommend when you're programming and you're, you're working in a console is, you know, get into there, get into the color picker for, you know, whatever console you're in. We're just demonstrating on the WMX here because it's easy and it's quick and we, you know, it's, and you know, if you just go color picker for the most part, they're just gonna use red, green, and blue. Now the WMX here uses more, which is great. And you can bring in white, amber, UV for fixtures that have it. I don't think any of these do, maybe. Oh yeah, one of them does actually, the front light does. And you can bring those in on the color picker and then actually work with it. And so the benefit there is vibrancy and brightness that you're able to get out of colors. And I, I really recommend that in building color presets in whatever console you use, using more than just RGB. Using just RGB is a cop out, don't do it. And then lastly, in how to make colors, I really, really, really recommend, you know, that, well, let's start here. Most shows have cameras, right? Even if the production itself doesn't have cameras, people are taking out their phone, they're taking video of your event, okay? And you want it to look the best that you can, right? And so in general, you know, this isn't a true and true always thing. You want, if you go from, you know, one color to another, like say we just go and take everything yellow, and then maybe we introduce one light in here that is, we'll go back to these guys, blue, right? You generally want these to be a similar brightness so that one doesn't blow out over another. Now this is most noticeable when you're lighting objects on stage that are hit with that color. For example, actually a really good example is our trust totems here, right? If I go through these different colors and I look at them on the camera, you see that some of them kind of wash out more than others, like yellow, way much more washed out than red or green or blue. Why? Well, obviously, probably obviously, yellow is red and green mixed together, two emitters in, in an additive LED fixture, and red and green and blue are just one of the emitters. 
So in most fixtures, that's going to be the brightest, right? It's the, the, the yellow is going to be brighter, the white's going to be brightest, but the yellow is going to be brighter than the blue. So what do you do? That's the kind of place where you can go into your console, go into your color picker, and, and when you're working, and not even the color picker, but with the, the parameters, when you're working with that light and you're actually in there, and you're actually, you go to your yellow and you're like, okay, I'm adjusting it here, right? I'm, I'm in here. I could actually go in here and just pull down on the amount of red and green that I'm using. Still keep them in proportion, but pull that down until it's around the same brightness level. And sure, you can measure it with a light meter. It would be better if it was a full spectrometer. Um, most people don't have those. They're pretty pricey. I've got one. But even just looking at it on camera and going, okay, you know, now that yellow was way blown out before. And now when I go yellow to blue to green to red, you see that they're pretty similar in terms of brightness on the camera and into the eye. It also works that way as well. Will there be times and can there be times in your events where sure you want to just punch it full brightness, you know, blow it out, whatever, you know, that's, that's an artistic decision for that time. Right. Um, <laughs> but in general, if you want things to look really good on video, pro tip is, you know, you want to keep your front wash consistent, keep that light level always consistent because that lets the cameras expose correctly. But if your color on the set or in the backlight or wherever is changing constantly, then that stuff will start to blow out from time to time. And it, it doesn't look as good, it doesn't look quite as professional as if your colors are balanced. Again, with every rule, as I got in trouble one time for telling my kids, there's times where it's meant to be broken, right? Not great for parenting advice to say that to your kids, but in lighting, it couldn't be more true uh, with things of the artistic nature, right? When you're hanging a light, when you're you know rigging and stuff like that, of course, don't break those rules, right? Safety. But when you're doing the artistic side of things, then rules are meant to be broken. Sometimes it just makes sense to. But I hope you guys really enjoyed this, really enjoyed learning a little bit more about color. Even if you find yourself to not really be an artistic person, this can be really helpful to know, okay, these are the main color combinations. Here's how I find them on a color wheel. Here's how I make things feel moody or balanced. You know, here's how I add a pop of positivity. We went over all that in today's video, and I hope you learned something great from it. If you did, then you'll definitely want to check us out in Learn Stage Lighting Lab. We'll have a link to it below, and it is just a great place where we teach people everyday stuff like this. We've got in-depth tutorials and courses that walk through stuff like this and show you how to do it in-depth. Plus, in our forums, you can ask experts for help, including myself, and we love to help. Not only that, if you need new lights, of course, or audio or anything, head over to AboveAVL.com. We don't sell chicken, but we do sell lights and audio and video walls, and we just love to help people find the best stuff, and we want to earn your business for decades to come. If that sounds good, we'll see you guys there. Thanks.